hold on. In a uh, recent New York Times essay, Tahir Hamoud Isgil wrote about the horrors and abuses facing the Uyghurs of China. And he, and he said this, quote, it's important to understand that profound injustice does not simply appear overnight. More often it creeps up on you quietly. You may not notice it, you may not want to. And injustice is infectious. Unquote. As a child, I had the experience of learning about historical events, I'm sure like many of you in school. But for me, late at night as I laid my head on the pillow, I would imagine what it would be like if I was living in those times. What would I see? What would I know? And what would I do? If I was living when we were slaves in Egypt, which of course we recount during Passover, what would I see? And what would I know? And what would I do? If it was November 1938, during Kristallnacht, night of the broken glass, Senator, as assembly member, Bauer Kane had referenced, 267 synagogues, 7,000 businesses in Germany and Austria destroyed. What would I see? What would I know? And what would I do? It's easy to think that the situation facing the Jews or other oppressed people back in time were different than today because they didn't have the means or the intellect to see what was happening around them. We're smarter and more aware now, isn't that right? <laughs> That's a very, very dangerous rationalization. American scientist Gerald Diamond used the word creeping normalization, creeping normalization to describe this type of slow moving change. Another metaphor that I'm sure you've heard to illustrate this type of problem is the boiling frog theory. Throw a frog in a boiling pot and it immediately jumps out for safety. Place a, a, pot, a frog in a pot of water and slowly boil it and it's death for the frog. I'm told that real frogs don't always act that way, but the power of this metaphor makes the point. Our democracy affords us a fighting chance to change the trajectory of oppression but it can be a very narrow window. A very narrow window of opportunity as powerful interests work to undercut democracy itself. When you call our nation's elections fixed with no factual basis and activate folks to invade the Capitol, make no mistake, this is an attack on democracy. And my conclusion is simple. The institution of democracy is also in peril. Forces of hate know a democratic society is a threat to their authoritarian and oppressive revolution. And make no mistake, it's a revolt against humanity, it's a revolt against diversity, it's a revolt against love, and it's a destructive force against me and you. And it's not just you in this room. Wherever you can hear or see me, I'm talking about you as well. We're all in this together. And we can't make it through these negative times unless we are all in this together. So here I am is a celebration of heritage, but it's also a moment for all of us to hold our collective hands, be together, stand together, not be silent, never again to minimize or rationalize when we hear voices of hate. Here I am. Thank you for being here with me together.